What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are back with another Detroit Lions training camp video, man. I'm excited for this. I love doing these videos and I don't know, it's just really fun to talk training camp. There's something about being there. They practiced right in front of me. I could sit there for like four straight hours just watching practice, okay? I know it's like two right now, but I think I could throw an extra two on that. After that, probably not because I will be like crazy burnt. It gets hot. But outside of it getting hot outside, man, it is fun to just sit there and watch them practice. Shout out to everybody that said what's up today. I appreciate you guys. Good to see y'all there. And then again, if you guys see me at training camp, say what's up. With that being said, though, we got a couple of things to hit on today. We're not just going to be hitting on training camp notes, but we also have some roster moves that were announced as well as some injury updates. In last video, we didn't do that, so I want to touch on those in today's video now when it comes to the roster moves i'm not going to spend as much time as we usually would for a signing biggest reason is because we're already doing the training camp notes and this video will be extremely long if i do that so i don't want to do that plus on top of it it'll make this video just come out even later and i don't want to do that i want to get the training camp notes to you and we'll touch on these players now if they make the team or they start making some noise we can always revisit that that's fine but for now i kind of just want to touch on these players that way we can get to the training camp notes and the injury update so let's waste no time let's get right to it let's talk about the two players that the Detroit Lions have reportedly waived. First off, we have cornerback Jaron Williams, who I said was playing a little bit in the slot the day that he was injured, which was the last practice that I was at. I believe he was carted off the field, and it has been reported that now he has been waived by the Lions. And I thought he had a solid day of practice the last time that I was there, the last practice that they had. They brought in a different cornerback to get a look at. On top of that, they also announced that they are waiving UDFA edge rusher, UDFA signing Zach Morton from Akron. Now, athletically speaking, Man, this guy was built the right way. He had a lot of the tools that you liked. But when he saw the practice reps that he was getting, he seemingly was much lower on the depth chart. So the Lions have also waived that player. In return, the Lions signed two players. Not at just the same positions, but they signed two players back to the roster. Now, the first one feels like sort of a replacement for losing Jaron Williams and getting another look in the defensive back room. And that is with Tay Hayes. Now, that's not his full name, but Tay Hayes was UDFA back in 2019. He's already bounced around a league to multiple teams the last team that we saw him on the nfl was the new england patriot 2021 he was a usfl champion with the birmingham aliens he's been around a little bit this is a udfa out of appalachian state that is not the biggest corner out there he's listed around five foot nine 188 Four, five, six, 40 yard, 35 inch vertical, 693 cone. The biggest thing that stands out to me of his testing scores is the 17 bench press reps. And I do feel like when you watch him on film, he does look like a little bit of a stockier build. And again, with the Lions, they've been open to adding that. We've talked about this a couple times now, but the Lions having a little bit more of the shorter corners, even on the outside, they've been willing to do that if they feel you can play there. A lot of it can come back to speed, but also just to trust to put you out in those positions. Can you handle yourself against bigger receivers and within what they do schematically? So, this is a guy that has played yes in the slot like Jaron Williams I saw practicing that could be a very possible place that they want to get looks at him but he's also played on the outside and most recently with the Patriots we saw that a little bit of him aligning on the outside there was a couple little notes that I had of course I didn't get to watch the player a ton because again I'm trying to kind of get this video out there a lot of off coverage you saw a lot of those half turn zone looks from an off alignment and I think the big thing that you took away is first off run support the willingness to stick his nose in support against the run some physicality on contact really just some power that he had on contact and then on top of that there was just a couple flash plays that stuck out to me first off against Miami specifically you had him matched up on Tyree Kill here within you know the red zone within like 10 five yards I think the play was and he covers this out route up really well reading that body language I thought he showed some real short area burst you saw it when he had good anticipation and recognition like on screens they would try to set up the jumps that he had kind of the, the ability to launch in a short area with good balance and then at the same time the patience here with a Mike Gesicki to break this pass up at the catch point. Maybe get a little bit behind, but play through the receiver's eyes, not panic, and break this up with really good timing. I think this play in particular is important. First off, because you're playing against a guy with a lot of size, and that could be a mismatch, you would believe, with a smaller cornerback, and he has to be able to handle that. Secondly, because a guy like Jaron Williams also got these reps with the Giants when he had to play in the slot against tight ends and slots and man them up. So it speaks to having to have that skill set, even in that body type. But he's bounced around a lot, been with a lot of different teams. He he hasn't played a ton in the NFL, and he also hasn't had a lot of special team snaps. Only 45 special team snaps in his career, so we'll keep
keep an eye on that. Of course, if he makes the roster, that'll be a spot I'm sure he's playing at a lot. And his skill set, you know, could be okay for that kind of role, but he's probably battling for one of those bottom roster, possibly practice squad kind of looks. Now, the other player that the Detroit Lions reportedly signed was Avery Davis. Now, I missed this one originally. It's why I was thrown off at practice. I was like, I don't know who this guy is. That was a receiver that was an undrafted free agent out of Notre Dame. It's a six-year player that was also a team captain. You know the Lions love that, so I had to bring that up. This guy ran a 4.64. Again, nothing crazy here. All bench rest reps, 1.65, 10-yard split, and he's also had to deal with some injuries. I mean, you're talking about 2021 in college, tore his ACL. 2022, undrafted free agent, tears his other ACL, so you're talking about some pretty bad luck there in terms of injury history, and this also can speak to some of the lack of production that he had at the college level. I mean, if you look at his career stats at Notre Dame, 66 receptions, 862 yards and eight touchdowns. There's not a lot of production there. Tom Kennedy had the injury, so this could be a player that maybe they want to get a look at, or maybe, you know, they don't feel great about, I don't know, like a guy like Trey Quinn, who they added out of USFL that was kind of the original replacement. Maybe they haven't felt great about how that's looked and they want to get another player that they can look at and they feel a little bit better about, you know, kind of slimming down on the edge rusher position. That's kind of what this feels like. It's not a huge receiver, five foot ten and a half, 199, so a little bit of a better build there. And from the little I watched, I thought, you know, the toughness stuck out, attacking the seams. I mean, this is a player that played a lot on the slot for Notre Dame, but occasionally would line outside depending on if they would go to, like, heavy personnel packages. But I thought you saw the toughness, kind of the feel, the ability to play within a stack, you know, kind of the awareness to find zone holes. But again, it's going to be probably some of the lack of athleticism to consistently keep him on the outside. That would be a little bit of an issue. Also, catch radius. You talk about contested grab, you know, in terms of the catch rate maybe isn't as high as you would like. This is a player that I definitely would have to watch more of so I don't want to speak too much on this player I haven't seen enough of him but it's an interesting signing considering what the receiver position already consists of and then finally just a quick little note here I saw this on Twitter right after practice former Detroit Lions offensive guard Ode Ibushi you probably remember that remember that name because it's a fantastic name and number two I don't even know if I'm saying the name right so I apologize if I'm still saying the name wrong I definitely need to look that up but Ode put it out there on Twitter or X I don't I don't know what X is. I, I, it's throwing me off. X, like, what, what does that mean, 10? Twitter, I'm going to say Twitter. We put it out there on Twitter that he was visiting Motown, that he was coming to Detroit for a possible reunion with the Lions. Now, this is a 32-year-old offensive lineman, again, playing that guard position. When he was last with us, 2020, 2019, we saw him playing the guard position for the Lions. And over the last couple of seasons, when he's been elsewhere, last year we saw him with the Rams when he was on the field. Pretty consistent for a pretty awful offensive line. And then the year before with the LA Chargers, right? guard I've seen a lot of Colby Sore still kind of with the next guy up but I think one thing to keep in mind with this is today I saw a lot of Graham Glasgow repping first unit I did see some big V through some team drills but they seem to be leaning into Graham Glasgow from what I could tell so that's something to keep an eye on is how do they feel about the health of big V and then also on top of that you know again they could just want you know potentially to add a consistent offensive guard I mean you look at KO who's been playing that left guard position side of that you're really looking at big V where you have some health questions questions at this point. You're looking at Graham Glasgow, who they seem to feel really good about. I don't think there's going to be any questions there. And then you have a rookie. So maybe they want to add someone else to that room. I'm assuming if he got signed, he's probably going to make the roster, but who knows? It could just be competition and maybe he doesn't. Maybe someone can beat him out. Two sacks on the season and 193 pass blocking reps, but he also only allowed five pressures in those 193 pass blocking reps. So something to keep an eye on. We could dive into it more if the Lions actually sign this player. Now let's update some of these injuries that we have some of them unfortunately are for today some of them are some updates from prior injuries first off we have Denzel Mims who left practice today with a lower body injury now it seemed to be like a leg slash ankle type of area I'm not sure what it is I'm not gonna act like I know what it is I really have no idea but he took a pretty big hit from Tracy Walker after making a really nice grab and he came up hobbled kind of walked off under his own power. They were checking him out, stretching him out. They had him on like a cart, you know, like kind of working with him for a little bit. Kind of walked off seemingly under his own power, but with a little bit of a hobble there. So hopefully that's nothing too serious because he's seemingly done pretty well in training camp. I mean, it hasn't been one of these things where it's like, yeah, he's not doing nothing. Like he's shown some things. Doesn't mean it was perfect, but he's definitely showed some things and he's been productive specifically in team drills, which I think is key because yeah, individual's great. But for a new guy, if you're not effective when you get out there with the team and they're not throwing you the ball, that might be an issue right so show up in those aspects is huge 
Hopefully this isn't super serious. I mean, this guy has had to deal with a lot in terms of injuries. He's had sickness in the past, which has kept him off the field. He just needs to get reps. I mean, he's kind of into that category. Hopefully this isn't too serious. Jamison Williams also mispracticed today. Not going to act like I have an update here. I don't have an update here. I mean, he seemed to be fine. I didn't see any kind of like injury thing in the last practice. There was something like a little minor that tweaked there. Or, you know, maybe it's just kind of a rest day type of thing. I don't know here with Jamison. I mean, I would have thought that would have been brought up. But either way, he did not participate. Neither was Jamar Jefferson. I didn't see him at practice today. I kept looking for him. Did not see him at practice today. Maybe it has something to do with this roster. You know, like, is he going to make the team or not? How do they feel about Mohamed Ibrahim? Like, Reynolds seems kind of in a little bit of a battle there with, like, a Mohamed Ibrahim for maybe, like, running back four. And then you have Jason Cabinda, who was snagging some passes with his hands. I mean, I'm just saying, after me and Red talked about it, I have to keep an eye on him. Through individual drills, he's catching with his hands. Now, he doesn't, like, fly through routes, but he's catching with his hands, so I'll give him that. Either way, we'll keep an eye on that one. And then Trinity Benson, according to Dan and Campbell. I mean, this seems to be promising, but again, we'll keep an eye on it. They did just sign a receiver, so we'll see how that goes. And then we still have Emmanuel Mosley on the pup list, but he did speak with the media, which I would say was promising as well, but he didn't really give any details. He said he feels good. He doesn't really know when he's going to get out there. And then, of course, Hennon Hooker, who continues to run around. Two guys that aren't listed here, but it's great news. Frank Ragnell back at practice with the first team. And also, Ify Melifon will return to practice as well from his ankle injury. So that's great, because we've already touched on his in injury history. So it's great that it's not something that's super long term here that he's able to get out there and work kind of a little bit mixing there with Savion Smith but we'll talk about him a little bit in this video do my best to fly through this and try to skip on the things that I don't think are worth mentioning okay again uh, some of these could be wrong in terms of players that I have listed it's very possible today they practiced opposite of us and you know I, it was kind of a call it was like hey let's go opposite maybe we stand up it'll be better because I didn't know where the players were going to stand on the sidelines so it was kind of far away but we could see it it was just a distance so there's a very legit shot specifically with the offensive lineman and defensive lineman that was difficult to really tell what was happening there so for me it was it was good because last practice I tried to focus on that more so today I can focus more on the quarterbacks and kind of the playmakers and see what was happening in that aspect but I still feel like we got some good notes so again if I have a player wrong I apologize it's very possible and if I miss a specific play that's also going to happen there's certain plays on here that I didn't get maybe a great note on or something that I didn't feel was even worth noting because I like had something like I would say oh it's a catch but there's nothing really else to it so anyways some of these individual drills that stuck out to me first off we were going through individual drills. Receivers were catching passes from the quarterbacks. They were making breaks. You know, they, they were running double moves. They were working level one. They were working level three routes. The biggest thing, level two routes, the biggest thing that stuck out to me was at the end of, you know, the receivers were going through the drills. Jameer Gibbs was in line as well, and Jameer Gibbs would be kind of the last guy through. And the three routes that I noticed him run, he ran kind of like an angle route, not your, like, you know, familiar angle route but it was something along those lines he also ran a little bit of a, a fade route he also ran a wheel route like he was mixing in towards the end of the drill so right at the end he would run a route as well and he caught all of his passes he looked good doing it but again I think that kind of speaks to how they think that they can utilize him and it was perfect because after writing this down today I thought was the biggest day that he popped specifically in the receiving game which is where I'm most excited for this player How about Trey Quinn okay obviously he's not the most you know explosive athlete but when you do watch him discipline was something that I liked popped up today in one-on-one -on -one drills it also popped up when he was just going through some of the individual work as well the kind of discipline that he was running with on his routes you could see it in his eye discipline those kind of things Antoine Green so off some juice when he was running a, a underneath route you saw the juice pre-catch pre and post-catch for a guy that was running underneath again I'm pretty optimistic about what he can do with the ball in his hands more so than you would expect just based on what I saw when I watched the player now let's get into some of these drills and we'll start off with the one that we were able to see pretty well and this was defensive backs versus receivers DJ Gardner Johnson who I listed with a pass breakup face guarding Denzel Mims again you notice this a lot with CJ Gardner Johnson is his ability to not panic when he gets underneath route he loves to seemingly play underneath route when you get into some of those goal line situations play through the hands excellent timing and you just love it like you could even see on his film like from past years kind of the feel that he has when he's underneath the route to be very patient squeeze it off right cut off the receiver get his eyes back to the football and that was an example to kind of kick things off Yeah, chase lucas with the pass breakup today kind of playing in a face guard position i thought chase, i think chase lucas is coming along a little bit like yeah i would definitely keep an eye on what chase lucas does in this year's preseason don't count the dude out again you look at the cornerbacks that we're signing if they feel comfortable that he can at least kick out in emergency situations to an outside alignment i would not overlook chase lucas especially if he proves himself on special teams i had brian branch with maybe a little bit of a grab but it was an incomplete pass on uh to Khalif raymond who we know is just very 
very difficult to stick with in general. Then I had Trey Quinn, who was contested by, I believe, the new cornerback, Tay Hayes. Now, I didn't know that at the time. I was just writing down his number, like, who is this dude? And you just saw some, I think, the lack of bursts coming in and out of breaks there for Quinn. There's just not a lot of, like, explosiveness. Um, and that can be a little bit of an issue for short, for tight windows. But for him, where he wins again, is with kind of the discipline as a route runner. We're about to talk about that. Lynn Drummond with a late win on Stephen Gilmore. Avery Davis, who had his pass broken up by Will Harris. Hey, Will Harris made some plays today in some of these drills as well. He's also got beat a couple times, but he, he made some plays today in these drills. But I believe that was Avery Davis, who I didn't see have a ton of success in this drill in particular. Antoine Green, who had his pass broken up, kind of running like a, a little bit of a fade route down there, covered by Starling Thomas. And the thing with Starling Thomas is he can play really well against very quick receivers. Now, Antoine Green doesn't really fall into that, but what it gives him is some flexibility. So if he can sit on top of quick receivers, but at the same time against some of these bigger, longer, lanky receivers, he plays with a lot of physicality and a really good job of squeezing routes. The big thing will be once we get refs and we go joint practice, is he getting flagged? Is he not getting flagged? Like that'll be the key thing to keep an eye on here. But if he's not, there's a lot of things to like about this player. Marvin Jones with the reception on Brian Branch on kind of an in-breaking route that I noted there. Then I had St. Brown with a contested catch on Cam Sutton. Very tight coverage, but Amon Ross St. Brown seemingly just catches everything. I mean, it's kind of gotten to that point where it's like, oh yeah, the guy's on him. It doesn't matter. He's still going to catch it. He doesn't even have to be open at this point. I'm telling you, I'm not just hyping him up or something like that. He just looks outstanding. Like, there's, it's hard to find, like, oh, he got him on that one. Like, it just doesn't happen. And then the team drills, he just pops, like, over and over and over. It's like, oh, St. Brown's open again. It's hard to find back. Reese Alexander, who I thought beat Chase Lucas on a route, kind of running maybe a little bit more of like a corner type of route. And then a really nice route. So this one that stuck out to me, great separation here. Marvin Jones kind of made it a little bit of a double move. You can see the craftiness, not just running necessarily maybe to, you know, oh, this is how it's drawn, but maybe adding a little bit of his craftiness shake to it on Jerry Jacobs. A really nice route inside, breaking back outside, kind of corner of the end zone type of thing with a completion there. Chase Coda, who had his completion on again, Tay. Hayes. And it was CJ Garner Johnson who I noted with another pass breakup. This time it was on Denzel Mims. Again, kind of just sitting underneath the route. May have been a little bit of a grab here. He'll be someone to keep an eye on as well, but I think he hides it pretty well. He's attacked. He's very comfortable. Very good ball skills is I think what sticks out there. Trey Quinn who had one of the nicest routes I think of the day. I don't think it'll get much attention because he doesn't, he's not burning somebody. He stood out to me here. He was mashed up with Will Harris and I thought he had one of the cleanest routes. The top of the route. This was exactly what you saw I think with the Michigan Panthers. Top of the route, you saw the discipline. He peeks back inside. The cornerback who's playing inside of him looks that way, and as soon as he does, slams on the break, comes back to the football, creates that space. I mean, it was beautiful, okay? He's not shaking him with explosiveness, but he's shaking him with the route discipline. It was I thought it was his best route. I still have to talk about this year's sponsor for the football season. I'm very excited about this, and I really appreciate this opportunity. We have partnered with BetUS, man, and BetUS is a leading online betting platform that offers offers a wide range of sports betting and casino games. Now, BetUS has a reputation for the reliability, their security, and their excellent customer service, and there's a lot of ways to get in touch with them. And it's very easy to sign up. So all you have to do is click the top link in the description. They're hooking you up with some nice bonuses. So if you click that link top of the description, you can claim some nice bonuses. All you have to do is sign up. It's like two pages, very easy to sign up. Then you can claim your bonus. You can see there's multiple different bonus options. You make your deposit, and if you make a minimum $100 deposit, you can get a 125% match on that deposit. So they're hooking you up. Bet US has a lot of different ways to bet. So it's not just football. I mean, they hit on all the major sports football, basketball, baseball, soccer. I mean, hey, if you're into soccer, there you go. Heck, they got esports on here, man. There's tons of different ways to do it, whether that's, you know, game props, pre game betting, whether that's over unders, whether that's future bets, live betting as well, including parlays. So you can build out your ticket and do things that way. If you're a returning member. There are five currently re up promotions, there are six listed currently sign up promotions. Through BetUS, you become a loyal member to BetUS, and this leads to other perks, including free payouts, free monthly tournament entries, bigger bonuses. And I want to shout out to BetUS. I'll have something very creative going forward for this, but for now, shout out to BetUS. Starling Thomas, who was stuck with Khalif Raymond. Now, this is the play I wanted to point out here. Khalif's tough after the catch, and we saw that. 
But at the same time, for a guy like Starling Thomas, who we know has all the twitch in the world, like like the guy is an ex extreme athlete. For him, he was able to sit on top of the whip route and not be completely like out of phase. He was still able to stay in touch with the receiver. He could go up there and potentially make a tackle. So he was in a pretty good position considering who he was matched up with one-on-one. -on -one, and I thought that's what stuck some uh, flexibility out to me that I think the Lions are definitely going to like. Brian Branch test that was an incomplete pass and that was on Avery Davis. Then it was Dylan Drummond who I had catching a touchdown. I don't know exactly who I had that one on. Ace Lucas has you know been showing some things. How about getting is going with an interception, an outbreak route, just literally undercut the route, stepped in front of it, intercepted the ball on Maurice Alexander. Maurice got some juice as well. We saw that today, team drills. That guy can run, but uh, beautiful from Chase Lucas. And, you know, the, the issue for him is, is that our slot position has become very strong very fast. He's one of those guys that are seemingly taking leaps. And maybe the biggest thing is there is that we just didn't get an opportunity to see it. I mean, the only time you got to see him play was preseason, and it seemed like he played well. And then he when he stepped in at safety, and it was like, oh, this isn't good. We gave him a touchdown because there were so many people hurt. We just haven't seen him play so the fact that he looks like really legit is like okay I mean maybe he just needs his opportunity to play this is great for him I hope the Lions are looking at that it seems like they are because I feel like he's doing pretty well and today was one of those days that really stood out to me a touchdown by St. Brown of course he was contested but you know I believe that was by Brian Branch but he still scored the touchdown because you know again St. Brown is just catching everything Tay Hayes Hayes Coda on an incomplete kind of in breaking route followed by Khalif Raymond who absolutely burnt CJ Gardner Johnson so this is where he's tough he burned him right off the line. I mean, it was just immediate bop. I'm wide open. CJ Gardner Johnson, throw me the fade. I'm wide open on this one. And then it was Will Harris who said, hold up. You got me last time, but let me come back with an interception on Trey Quinn doing something very similar to what that man did a little bit earlier in Chase Lucas. Now, not the same route. It was a little bit of like a double move, kind of like a hitch and go type of look. Not exactly that, but it was something similar to that, right? And Will Harris steps underneath the route, intercepts the pass. It didn't look like the most sticky coverage. Where the distance is, like, like how tight the quarters are, doesn't always have to look perfect, right? You don't have to stick with them the whole time. You just got to stay in phase and understand when the ball's coming. And this is what Will Harris did. Pass breakup from Chase Lucas on Josh Reynolds again and that's a huge thing there if you can show that flexibility you can stick outside you know even if it's only situational if you could just show me some flexibility, man. Finally, I had Antoine Green with a win on Stephen Gilmore. It was a very late win in the rep, but it was a win for Antoine Green. So that was good to see because, you know, there's been some talk about where he's been on the death chart, things like that. But those are the notes I have from that. Now, actually, I got one more thing. So I said O-line, D-line was hard to see. Really, the big notes that I took away because the players that I could see, I just tried to know the players that I can see. And here's like a couple little things that popped to me from what I could tell. First off, Romeo Quarry seemed to have a nice little bull rush put on Jermaine Effetti. So that's good just in terms of him getting some of that ability to convert speed to power back. I thought that was something that didn't look great last year. So if he can just kind of bring that back a little bit, that's great. Also, Jermaine Effetti, I thought, had a really solid day. I mean, there was a couple times where I was just looking at him playing tackle on Hutchinson because we saw a lot of second team offense versus first team defense. And it was like, hey, he's kind of holding up. Like, that would be the one thing, and we're going to go through this, if you said, wow, okay, how did first-team defense do against second-team offense? They probably won the day. But in terms of pass rush, I, I mean, I, it was hard to see from where I was, so I couldn't, like, pinpoint everything, and I'm sure I missed certain pressures. But for the most part, it actually didn't seem terrible. Like, they seemed to hold up okay. I saw Julian bust out some of the edge, some of the dip, the bend to his game, some of the flexibility that he has, and he also made a splash play a little bit later, which we'll get to. And then a bull rush I noted from Chris Smith out of Notre Dame, who's been popping a little bit from last practice as well. And finally, I saw a little bit of an anchor there from Obina Eze, and when they went back to individual drills later, you saw them working with Obina Eze on creating that anchor. And it was funny because the last practice, I remember noting he got bowled right back to quarterback by James Houston. But let's not forget, Houston is a legitimate pass rusher, and Obina Eze Eze, I thought one of the reps, he showed some real anchor. I was like, oh, that looks pretty good. And then he was working with that. You could see him really working with that with Hank Fraley. So, you know, again, if he can build on that, we know what kind of athlete he is. It's just he hasn't played a lot of football. Let's get to some of these 11 on 11s. I'll try to fly through this. Stick with me. Let's go. We'll start off, Gummer. You had a short little, like, medium, like, four-yard type of run. Again, the run game is kind of hard to evaluate. I think it's almost more about valuing which players do want on the play. But a short little run there for David Montgomery, followed by a Khalif Raymond wide receiver screen that seemed to go for, again, another kind of medium type of gain. And then followed by an Ali McNeil shed. And from what I could tell, again, it was hard to see it. Ali McNeil's in the backfield a lot, specifically on run plays. Now, pass rush has been a little bit, I feel like this. You know, it's not been consistently dominant. 
and that's probably a good thing because if it was, that'd probably be not good for offense line. But if there is an area that I think that he's flashed more often than not is honestly run defense in terms of just consistently being in the backfield. I mean, other than the occasions where he's asked to play straight up with an offensive lineman, you know, to face up alignment, when he's asked to, you know, kind of get a, get a, get a, uh, get a shoulder of a guard and he's able to play in a little bit of a shade technique the ability to consistently kind of get behind the line of scrimmage has flashed and that was exactly what I noted next on this play and it forced a cutback by David Montgomery then we moved on to the second team offense and how about we talk about a guy that had a really strong day today and again I told you I was excited because this is where I gave my highest grade to the player and it's where I think his impact can really just be the best because he can really become a matchup nightmare and it felt like today was kind of like a breakout party in that sense like oh here he is okay that's what he can do as a receiver but this first play was not that it was first off a Jameer Gibbs run towards the outside I noted Chase Lucas just flying right through to the backfield but then they went back to Jameer Gibbs with a little bit of a flat route and it was it was a lot of the underneath stuff and you know that's fine like hey look you feel comfortable with it. It was, It's not necessarily like check down where it's like, okay, hey, man, no one's open deep. Let me check it down. But the quick reads, right, when you can run and, and you're attacking an underneath zone and maybe you have a, you know, two-man route combination, you quickly get it out to him. There were a few of those passes. Maybe this one wasn't exactly that, but it was a little bit of a high pass from Nate Sudfeld because now it was the second team offense that was working here. I had Will Harris listed for an incomplete pass. Uh, that was a contested pass. It was kind of a, it was kind of a go route that Will Harris was tested on there, followed by Jameer Gibbs once again in the flat picking up about five yards once again it's Craig Reynolds who caught an underneath route Antoine Green who made a really nice diving grab kind of coming back to the football next play I really wanted to focus and I focused on Obina Eze who was lined at the tackle position good pass protection that I noted from the player and again they were getting a lot of first team defense types of look good pass throw we threw a little flat route to the running back next play had me smiling and that was Sam Laporta so Jameer Gibbs had a nice day today but Sam Laporta also kind of popped a little bit in the receiving game and it wasn't necessarily because he didn't before like for example last video I know we talked about a lot of the underneath stuff that he was being effective on today I thought it opened up a little bit for him and he had a couple explosives in there and it was this one that had me smile and had people around say oh look at that man go like that guy's got some juice to him and it was something that I know we touched on right out of the draft but it was just like hey when we throw a tight end screen it's no longer to be like hey five yards okay you know we'll get what he can get but this guy could make something more happen and this one wasn't him breaking defenders from what I could tell it was just a deuce it was just a speed it was able to hit the gas and roll and there's another great example I have of this that put another smile on my face that I was like okay Sam Laporte is a good it was good today it was good to the offense today we'll continue with that but it was a screen that was thrown to Laporta and he just got to the edge got to the sideline and took off and it would have been a pretty big gain I don't know exactly how far but it seemed like it would have been a pretty good gain he got rolling and you could just see the speed it was like okay that's a little bit different from a tight end there so that was pretty awesome followed by a Josh Reynolds kind of jig, drag route that was covered there by Jerry Jacobs then an outside zone run where you saw Monty with you know plant his foot one cut some of the flexibility in the lower body you saw it back with the Bears but it's really showing up so far through camp with the Lions with all of these zone runs and now this next play was something that originally kind of had me like Ooh, that was nice but I didn't see where the ball went right so because I didn't see where the ball went, I, I didn't know really how to feel about this one. Remember, this is first team offense against first team defense. So Goff was the quarterback at this point. Laporta's out there. Jameer Gibbs on the field. So mixing in here, at, you know, kind of those pass down reps. And he stepped in and picked up Alex Anzalone in pass protection. Now, he wasn't like great in pass pro in college, but he showed the ability to do it. And he's probably not going to be a great pass protector in the NFL either. But if you can, you know, clean up some of the technique and then you obviously you get the effort there, he can help you in spots. And that's what you need because you can't just every time he's out there it's going to be a pass unless you just line up a receiver because teams are just going to attack him right so with that being said Jameer Gibbs stepped in picked up Alex Anzalone the issue is that the ball was like floated over the middle and there was no one home next to me they were saying that you know he's looking for St. Brown who's in front of him I, it looked like there was some maybe miscommunication because I didn't see anybody near the ball but you know I could have just missed that regardless I saw Gibbs step in and Set and take a block now the thing I don't know is that if Alex Anzalone tipped it maybe that was why it looked like it did and then in that case it wasn't the best block but I do like the fact that he stepped in and took the block so I'm gonna assume it wasn't because from the angle that Alex was coming from I don't think he could have tipped and the ball could have went there I don't think that would have made sense and it didn't look tipped so yeah I'm gonna say it was a nice flash because I think he stepped in and just took on the block to the second team and here we go with the splash play Julian Okwara man I feel like he needed this there hasn't been a lot of talk about him but again one thing we have touched on is a lot of lot wide alignments from the edge rushers really more of their Sam linebackers you know your Charles Harris the you know in this case Julian Okwara you know your James Houston like they've asked those guys to drop I haven't seen as much as James probably because if he's out there you just want him rushing the passer but we've seen these guys be asked 
to drop. And then, of course, you get your hutches. Those guys will do it too. But it was Julian Okwara stepping in front of an underneath route, dropping underneath in zone, and intercepting a pass from Nate Sudfeld, throw to uh, Dylan Drummond. And he probably could have took the thing back to the house. Now, maybe he would have been stopped. But it was an athletic interception into the flat. And it was pretty awesome. It was great to see that for Julian. I'm glad he was able to make that play. Sack. And I was so excited to see this number. Ify Melifonwu getting reps, you know, behind Savion Smith. But Ify Melifonwu stepped in there, had a sack. We had a couple of those today where guys were unblocked free, which is not great. But it was good to see Ify just back on the field. Quick little screen that they threw to Maurice Alexander. And he just showed off the kind of the gas that he has. As I touched on, that guy can really run. I believe would have been like a first down reception from Nate Sudfeld. Stepping up, Julian delivering some pressure and hitting James Mitchell coming back to the ball in a little bit of like a curl route. Then he moved on to the next team, the third team, and it started off with a run stop from Jalen Reeves Mabin on a little bit of a lead run. It was James Houston who flashed against the run here. Back zone run, run stop for the Lions defense, and then Chase Lucas. Like, we talked a lot about these young guys, but don't forget Chase Lucas. Chase Lucas comes up with a sack, and he was fired up. Like, the energy has been great with this player as well. The big thing here is that, again, he was a free rusher, which is not great. He was completely free. I think he went through the tackle box to get the sack, but he got there in a hurry. So Chase Lucas with a sack. Give him credit. Maybe he disguised it really well. Regardless, Lucas got a sack. So you've already heard me say a lot of a lot of splash plays from this player. I'm going to Ross Bain Brown caught a little bit of like a spot route on Charles Harris. Speaking of dropping, a lot of dropping, as I said. Charles drops a lot into that underneath coverage, that athleticism. And that's something that Julian, if, if he's making plays like that, they're going to want to keep that type of player around. And as we talked about, they just released one of their edge rushers. So that could be in the cards. Then it was David Montgomery um, covered by Alex Anzalone. It was kind of like passed off to Kirby Joseph, just an underneath little flat route. Lee McNeil, who again, to me, flashed against the run, getting into the backfield. I was even saying it like he's playing behind the line of scrimmage a lot. Getting into the backfield, short run for David Montgomery, and then an incomplete pass that was a little bit behind uh, Marvin Jones Jr. You can see him kind of like, dang, that was a little bit behind me. Alex Anzalone was the tightest in coverage there. There's just a little underneath, kind of like a, you know, short little like in route that he was thrown. David Montgomery, big hole, pops a nice little run. Then it brings on the next unit for the offense and starts off with a couple of underneath plays. Nate Sudfeld throwing a little spot route there to Brock Wright. Then it was a little bit bit of a short run behind the left guard followed by Denzel Mims big really nice reception kind of that dig route middle of the field where he made a great grab and then he came up hobbling unfortunately and this is where he was taken off the field what you like is that the quarterback had all day in the pocket so as I touched on there was a handful where it was like man the quarterback literally has all day here I thought the heat started to ramp up a little bit towards the end and they started to kind of close it down shut it down you know what I'm saying but for a stretch there like there was really good time in the pocket for this second team offense and that was an example of it to pick up that big shot was I think a lot due because of how long the quarterback could just stand in the pocket of course it was a touchdown from that man Dylan Drummond now give Dylan Drummond his credit it was a corner route it was a high low setup but give credit to also the schematics of this you could see the cornerback drive down on the ball the underneath defender was also sitting there from I believe the linebacker position or the slot he sat underneath as well cornerback drove down now it gave leverage to the slot receiver who was Dylan Drummond and then the safety was stuck inside leverage the ball was thrown to the outside shoulder and it was an easy, I wouldn't say it was an easy reception, but it was away from the defender, and it was a touchdown grab. So, nice by Dylan Drummond. Also really nice schematically there for the offensive side of the ball. To the next unit, it started off with the screen, and this was taken away by James Houston, who I noted on the play for covering this thing up. Followed by Maurice Alexander running a drag, and that seems to be where he can really show his speed off, drag screens, those things. Then, uh, James Mitchell, again, another nice little curl route. He's been very effective working back to the football, and I think we saw that a little bit last year in some of the few receptions that he had his ability to kind of spot up, post up, and work back to the ball. He's had some effectiveness creating separation in those spots, and we're really seeing that in practice. Followed by a pass breakup from Stephen Gilmore, who's also flashed as well. Gilly, as they call him. Another kind of curl route. Then a little bit of a check down there from Martinez, and then it was Craig Reynolds, who I thought looked really good in, the, in, in his footwork, man. Some really quick feet, man. He was, again, it was Stephen Gilmore who popped, and this was Nate Sudfeld who on a rollout play, you know, one of this first, you know, the easy read that's usually broke wide open and we've seen that over the last few practices where that gets wide open uh, on the far side but in this case Stephen Gilmore covered it up well the issue is is that there's no one to cover the quarterback so he covered up the underneath receiver took it away but Sudfeld ultimately just kind of scrambled out of it and ran into the end zone because you know there was no one that was accounted for that so you know at, again some of the athleticism shown off there well it's covered up well which is great to start but then he just kind of walked into the end zone inside run followed by Craig Reynolds you know with a short little run a broken play
play. So this was kind of an ugly three-play stretch. It looked like a broken play. It was a play fake, and then Nate Sudfeld took off. I definitely don't think that's exactly what they were planning to do there. It didn't look right. Look like a broken Again, play. Sam Laporta, I thought he started to pop a little bit. It got pretty excited here. So it started off with an Aleem McNeil bull rush that I noted. It was a completion, kind of a medium route there to Marvin Jones Jr. And the big thing is I saw golf start to kind of get in a rhythm here. There was a flow to it. There was a lot of decisiveness and velocity in these throws. I mean, he was hitting some tight windows, and it almost felt like when a shooter gets kind of hot and they're just like, man, they're kind of like, they're kind of diamond some of these throws. Like, there wasn't even an incomplete one where I was like, okay, that was kind of, that was like really good throw, though. Kind of went through this. You start to see some of those throws. So, like I said, Marvin Jones. And then there was two plays very close to each other here with Sam Laporta that I love. The first one he spotted up with Derek Barnes had a nice little completion. But then it was a drag mashed up on Derek Barnes. And the thing is, is, you know, we talked about this a little bit, I think, before. But Derek Barnes is fast and straight line. We know that. I think he ran a 4 five, seven coming out. For Sam Laporte to match it up man to man and separate like he did on a drag route, just running away from Derek Barnes, I think it spoke to the speed because I believe Derek Barnes was aligned in the interior. So he already had kind of that leverage in the inside and he just ran away from him on a simple drag route. So again, it's kind of showcasing that just straight line speed. That play got me excited because I think it just really spoke to the athleticism. But also the fact that in last practice, so all these underneath routes were starting to see Laporte get going and for golf to have this trust underneath and then he started to open up a little bit and hit him a little bit more downfield. So so it was really exciting to see the kind of rhythm that he was able to get to offensively, but also with this, including the rookies. Like, it wasn't just golf to St. Brown over and over and over. He started to expand and get comfy, but it was beyond just St. Brown. It was also Laporta's now getting mixed in. And then Gibbs flashes a big play here. So then they try to hit a little bit of a hole shot. This was between Starling Thomas and Savion Smith. Uh, it was like a nice little corner route. It was a little bit high, maybe, but it was very well contested. This would have been a very tough one. He probably wouldn't have got his feet in bounds anyways. But I like the chance. I like the throw that they made there. Then it was a little bit of a scramble, kind of working outside of the pocket. Amon Ross St. Brown, that fell incomplete. You saw Tracy Walker kind of work his way down on the out route. Ross St. Brown kind of just spotting up middle of the field, picking up a, a little bit of a chunk there. We've seen a lot of those type of routes, working back to the ball, spotting up in the zone holes, those types of things. Speaks to kind of the football intelligence you have to have to find those zone holes. And we got a lot of zone beaters. We saw that last year. We destroyed a lot of zone coverage. Josh Reynolds. Now this pass was incomplete, but I thought it maybe was the best throw of the day from Jared Goff. I mean, it was a, it was a beautiful throw. Now, credit to Starling Thomas, who was covering Josh Reynolds. He covered him up really well. It's a corner route into the into the end zone. I think it was a little bit closer to the front of the end zone, but it was a about 20, what, 20, 25 yards out, and it was on him. Like, Sterling Thomas was on the inside. He put it right on Josh Reynolds. The ball was incomplete. Sterling was hyped because he did contest it extremely well, and you probably would have gave him that note, but it was a great ball, and I was like, man, that thing should have been caught. That was a dime, but it just was not caught, but there was some velocity when that ball came out, I and mean, he put it on. There was no lob. I mean, he put it right there in that window, so again, just he feels like a guy that really, once he gets to that rhythm, he starts to throw it a little bit different, and that's kind of what you felt here. The ball just started coming off a little bit different because that followed up a Kali Raymond about probably about a 10 yard completion again working a little bit back to the ball really nice pocket and then it was a false start which you don't love because again there was less today but still the false start you don't love it then it was Jameer Gibbs who had the play that everybody was like uh oh <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's got to the You saw this, like, oh, okay, this is going to be a problem. Jameer Gibbs, who ran a wheel route, but it was more of like a double move. So it was kind of like an up, out, and then back up the field a little bit more rather than just like your pure wheel route. So it had a little bit of flavor to it. For the touchdown, and this was matched up on Malcolm Rodriguez, and it was a really nice throw, which, again, I've talked about. Like, we need to hit these wheel routes to running backs more consistently. So it was a really nice ball. Put it on him. It was like right on his body, like his chest. But to contort himself, catch that thing, Contested, you know, relatively well by linebacker, but he separated late for a touchdown. This this whole drive was like, uh-oh. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? The rookies are here, and they're contributing in a big way. We started to get kind of into this situational drill kind of look. Now, this is when Big V kind of popped in at right guard for the Lions, and I thought that was worth noting because I saw a lot of Graham Glasgow working first unit. So, Big V popped in here, and it was really the Amon Ross show to begin this. It was a screen to Dave Montgomery, followed by two completions to St. Brown for nice chunks, one on Chase Lucas, one between Thomas and Lucas. Then it was kind of a higher pass incomplete when they just decided to run it because it was like a short distance situation. Actually, the clock was also running but they decided to run it uh, just to pick up the first down and they spiked it immediately so there was like 37 seconds left on the clock so they did pick up the first down then they spiked it and they decided to go on second down right to Sam Laporta and this is where Laporta went from being like oh he's he's getting comfortable with the quarterback to saying let's throw a touchdown to that guy and he was completely wide open like it, it seemed like a zone hole kind of breakdown he was wide open in the, the front of the end zone on like a corner route but Sam Laporta then caught a touchdown 
And again, like the comfortability was there, but to see a young guy start to really pick up that rhythm within that kind of flow of a situational offense is awesome. Moved on to the second team offense at this point. Now on their situation for practice, they had a little under four minutes left and it was a 10 point game. And I believe that this drive that the second team offense went back on the field was to try to milk the clock because their three play calls were like milking the clock kind of plays. So on third down, they did a little boot action, but then they went back and flipped it and the second team went to score. Then they did an onside try and they tried to score again to come back from down 10 points. So this was all situational here. Big Benito Jones, who I listed with a run stop. Then it was Muhammad Ibrahim with a run to the right and a boot play that was shut down by Romeo. Romeo Okor and forced the sack. The quarterback stepped back inside and took the sack. With the second team offense, it started off with an out route that was thrown to Muhammad Ibrahim, kind of just, you know, out to the flat. And it was Jerry Jacobs there was in tight coverage. This is when the situation began and they started to go, you know, kind of no huddle offensively, speed things up. Then it was Maurice Alexander kind of spotting up in the in, in, uh, middle of the zone defense. And it was Charles Harris who was dropped there in the coverage that was a completion Dylan Drummond again but this one was broken up by Brian Branch and this is where Brian Branch kind of had his moment so very tight coverage top of the route broke on the ball broke it up followed by Brian Branch saying no this situation is over I'm picking this thing off and I don't know exactly what happened on the play it seemed like you know it, it wasn't the ball wasn't in the best placement here and it was thrown it believing to uh, Dylan Drummond it was just like well under thrown for what they were looking to attack there and he was just kind of sitting underneath picked the ball off as Dylan Drummond ended up just running by now the situation wasn't over they basically just picked up where they left off there like hey we got to finish this drill so they picked up where they left off continued with the drill but it was a back-to-back -back great play sequence for Brian Branch and an interception continue on here first team defense now against second team offense it gained to start things off and that was Chase Coda who picked up a big reception to go up and spike it and then Cam Sutton's like you know what let's end this thing again and this is great the first team defense should beat the second team offense pass pro I thought was solid but the secondary to step up it kind of feels a little bit different. Like, hey, the secondary is stepping up. And uh, it was Cam Sutton who said, I'm going to end this thing again. And he picked off a curl route that was thrown right over the middle. I don't know, for about like 10 yards. And he just, you know, stepped in front of it, intercepted it. So again, that ended the drill. But they said, let's continue. And that was Justin Jackson who had a, a short little run there. And now we were at kind of the two-minute warning at this point in time situationally. Then it was a pass thrown out to the running back. That was high. Jack Campbell was the tightest in coverage. And then it was a touchdown. They finally punched it into the end zone. It was Brock Wright breaking into a corner route, got behind Jack Campbell, though I don't know Jack was necessarily the guy that was going to be able to cover that because, again, it felt like a zone beater. And they got behind on a corner route, scored a touchdown. Now, what I did like is that at this time where I felt like the pass pro was winning, I thought Charles started to pick up some heat a little bit, start to give them some life in terms of pass rush. I thought there was a little bit of pass rush there from Charles on that touchdown throw. They did it onside, did not convert it, got back up there. I noted Jermaine Effetti. So now down three with a minute 47 left. Jermaine Effetti, who's working against Touch, I thought he was doing pretty well against Aiden Hutch. He was actually doing really well, protecting the inside, not letting him set up, you know, some of the stunts that they were trying to work on the right side, weren't letting them get free through. And then on top of that, he wasn't letting Hutchinson beat him towards the inside. So I thought he held up well originally. It was a check down there to the running back that started things off. Then it was Brock right underneath, followed by Mohamed Ibrahim. There again, we saw some Charles Harris pressure on the opposite side of Aiden Hutchinson. Now with 59, 59 seconds and a spike, this is where the Lions defense said, okay, let's end this thing. Charles Harris came up with a sack. Now it was fourth and long. And then Aiden Hutchinson was able to get around the edge just enough on, not by a lot, but just enough on Jermaine Fetty, who was protecting the inside, but he just gave up enough of the edge, closed off the pocket, got a sack on Fetty, and Aiden Hutchinson ended the drill right there. Both kickers I had noted for one of one, one for one on the day in terms of when they stepped in two kicks. And then at the end of practice, I noted it was 84, who again, as we know now, is the new receiver, Avery Davis, who was working some routes with the new cornerback. So it makes sense that these are the two new guys. He was working with Tay Haynes and they were running some routes against each other there so that was cool to see the new guys going out there working trying to get in some extra reps because basically they just got to the place but that's what I noted from practice so the defense stepped up at the end offensive line was pretty solid against the first team defense for for the most part until it started to heat up there at the end and they got to pin their ears back and you know Charles picked it up and then Aiden Hutchinson basically just closed the deal but to see the young guys get integrated like that to the offense and have it flow was awesome Brian Branch again made his flash plays as he continues to don't over Overlook Chase Lucas, and uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'm out.